Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Elementor tutorial, I'm going to show you how we like to create mega menus. Now, there's a lot of different mega menu plugins that can work on your Elementor websites, but very few can utilize the built in Elementor template system. As of recording this video in March 2022, Elementor hasn't released their official mega menu system yet. The plugin I'm going to be covering in this tutorial is from Ultimate Add ons for Elementor. If you've seen some of our past videos, you know that we're big fans of this plugin and love how many widgets you get when you purchase a license. If you want to help support this YouTube channel, you can do that by using the affiliate link in the description below to purchase the plugin. And when you purchase the plugin, we're going to get a small commission and that helps keep this YouTube channel going. I'll be 100% honest with you and building mega menus do take a lot of work and there's actually a lot of understanding what its limitations are within the browser itself. The plugin we're going to be using is going to save you a lot of time and effort because you won't need to custom code anything. It's all just going to be built into the plugin. To follow this tutorial, you will need Elementor Pro and of course this plugin right here, Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. Here's an example of what we're going to be pulling off in this tutorial. As you can see, we have a few menu items that appear with the drop down icon. So when you hover over each one of these, each one of these is a different mega menu system. And you can see some of them are actually interactive like this one's a carousel. There's a button here. You can have a dynamic blog feed. So this stuff doesn't have to be static. You can actually pull in a regular Elementor post widget and show your latest blogs. You can have like a contact form, a map here if you wanted. So anything that you can do in Elementor pretty much you can bring inside your mega menu system. Now I'm just going to jump right into the back end and let's get started on this. So the way this plugin works is every time you hover over one of these menu systems, it's just displaying a saved uh, template already that you have in your system. So you got to make sure you build all of these out first and then you can pull in their widget and then configure it all up. But you need to first create your sections right here. So I have all these tabs open right up here. As you can see, there's five of them. I'll just quickly show you what each one looks like. So you can see right here, it's just a regular section. We have a heading tag here, and these are just uh, images like in a grid. So nothing crazy right here. Um, so what I do recommend is, in most cases, you probably want to have your mega menu system, the width of your whole container right here. So the width all the way to where your logo would be and your menu system, you know, this is going to vary depending on how your website's built. Um, but what I do recommend with mega menu systems is try not to go all the way to the edge and then don't make it too narrow. So something where it's like, you know, at least, I don't know, what is that? Almost 50% width, you know, something along those lines where it's big enough to make it worth having a mega menu system. So in this case, you can see right here, this is just a default layout uh, width, it's just box, but you can go ahead in here and change it however wide you want it. And then that's gonna pull in correctly. So let me put that back to zero. And pretty standard stuff, we have it where you know, each one of these is the same thing. It's just inside the same grid layout. We have our team, we have this one, and this one is dynamic. I can quickly show you that this is just using the regular uh, Elementor post widget. So I just pulled that in and then you can just have whatever post you want. In this case, I just did like Elementor videos. So you could pull in anything that's dynamic. You can even pull in, a, if you're running a WooCommerce store, you can have products in here. I mean, really there's no limitations of what you can do in this mega menu system. As long as it fits inside this section and you don't have it too tall, it will work perfectly. And then this last one is of course, just a regular contact form. You could have, like I said, a map here, or whatever you want over here. A lot of these are just the default uh, Elementor templates. I just pulled in just for examples. So as you can see, when I come back out to the dashboard here under templates, save templates, we have the five different examples. I just called it mega example one through five and you want to make sure that it says section. So you want to make sure when you create these new things, you create add new section. Now after you create all your sections, you can come over into your header template. So in this case, this right here is my header template in Elementor Pro. I'm just going to throw in um, the nav widget. So if you just type in nav, you can click this one in. Uh, the one that you want to bring in is the one with the tag here in the corner. See where it says uh, UAE. It's the ultimate add-ons. Just click and drag that in. By default, it's going to bring in um, whatever you know menu system you have. But what you want to do is under type, just click on custom because we are actually going to be creating the whole menu system in here. So you're not going to be going uh, like other plugins that if you've tried out, you need to go into like the WordPress menu system. We're not gonna, you don't have to do that in this one. You do everything right within uh, the editor itself, which is something that I really like. 
So let me go ahead and remove all of these and you can see what we're working with. Um, first thing is underneath layout, let's just shift this to the right so everything's to the right here. And what you have to do is on the very first one right here and underneath uh, text, so I'm just gonna type in our clients just as an example. So the way it works is you have two different items. You have a regular menu and then a sub menu. Uh, it's a little confusing. Once you do a few of these, you're gonna understand it. So I'm gonna walk you through this. The very first one is always gonna be called menu and then your mega menu needs to say sub menu. So what you need to do is just close this down for now, click add item and you see right here, just click a uh, sub menu. So now what you do is instead of text, you're going to want to go to this button right here, saved section. This is where all the magic is happening. This is how the whole thing works. And then what you want to do is just select example number one. So that's why I say this doesn't work unless you have all of these sections already saved. So you just click on example one and now you can do a test within the browser. Now, in most cases, it's going to, you know, go off the page and it's not going to work the way you want. And the way it works is all of the drop down menu settings for each one of these icons up here or menu items is going to be right here. Um, like I said, once you do a few, it's not that hard. You can just duplicate everything. Um, so drop down width default is not what you want. You could do custom and let me show you what that does. So that is going to have a custom width uh, and you can see it keeps wanting to go to the right. So what you could do is change this to the right where it bumps up. But we're actually going to not be using any of these because that can get a little confusing. In some cases, if you just have one or two menu items, you can use this custom function right here. So you can see I'm changing the custom width. Um, I can go all the way to like 1500 and it will go to 1500. Now, once you have a bunch of menu items, you're not going to want to play with left, right, center. What you want to do is go under this one right here, equal to container. And when you click that, let me show you how it looks when you start to go full screen. So you could see it's pulling in the width of this whole container right here. So the container is where the logo starts and where this menu items are going to stop. Now I did say in the beginning of the tutorial, you could go to this one right here equal to section. Um, so when you do that, what it's going to do is go full width. You're going to see it goes all the way across. Now I've been doing a lot of testing with this plugin and that can get a little buggy sometimes. It's more of a browser thing and just how Elementor works. If you start to go full width to the section, if you start to scale and move stuff around on the screen, sometimes that can kind of throw things off. So you could try that if you need that type of functionality, but I would say in most cases, equal to containers, what you want to stick with, because this is your container right here. And you see right here where your um, first row starts and this one, this that's your container. Now they do give you a few other options we can go over real quick. So if you go right here, they have equal to column and it's going to do what you think. It's going to go to the width of this column right here. So you can see this is your column. It's just going to go as wide as that. And then this one is probably going to be the one that you wouldn't use at all would be the width of the widget itself. So if you have only a few items, um, let me shrink it down so you can see. You can see right here, it's only going to go as wide as, let me, click a preview. Sometimes the preview doesn't quite work. Just click on preview. And you can see right here, it's only going to go to the width of the widget. So that's not going to be uh, very useful in most cases. I would say from my testing and in most cases where you use a mega menu, you just want to click this one right here, equal to container. So that's all you have to do. Now let me go ahead and stretch this back. And let me just do this and fast forward. I'm going to do that for the rest of these items. And you're going to see that it's the same exact thing. We're just going to duplicate all of these. Okay, so now you can see I have all of the different menu items in here. We got the clients, our team, work, blog. So like I said, once you just set one up, it's just the same process. Uh, you just go to equal to container. And the menu item, this was section four. So now you can see when I hover over, we got our team, uh, work, the blog, and contact. So everything is working correctly in here. Now the good thing about this widget is this isn't just for mega menus. They have pretty much everything that you can do with a regular uh, nav widget from Elementor, but you could do more of it. So if you go underneath layout, you're gonna wanna probably choose a uh, horizontal if you're gonna be doing a mega menu. Um, I guess you could do these in vertical. I haven't really tried that, but this right here is where you're gonna be aligning your items. So you can see if I click center, it's gonna come right here. 
and it's still just gonna fill up the width of this container. So that could work in most cases. So let's just stick it to the right. Uh, show sub menu on hover or click. So just like it says, you can have it where it hovers, or if you wanna have it where the user has to click, that could be activated right here. And then they give you a few different options for the uh, arrows next to it. And then if you want, they have this one animation for slide up, but I just like keeping it at default. And then you probably, you probably just wanna keep this at open sub menu, action on menu click. And then down here, they give you some responsive controls. You know, if you've been using the Elementor one, it's pretty standard on how to do it. Now, if I go underneath style, this is where you can go ahead and start styling some of these things. So you can see horizontal padding is going to, if I update this, more spacing over here between the menus. Like I said, very similar to the Elementor one. Um, I don't need to really cover all of that because that's just how you can control that. But underneath drop down is where you can go ahead and change some of these settings and it will pull through. Other things won't because you have a section. It's a little confusing, but let me show you exactly what I mean. So underneath the uh, background color, for example, you can change this right here to like a red. And let me show you how that looks. So you can change the background color here if you didn't do it already in your safe section. If you do have a, a background color on one of your safe sections, it'll override this. So this is kind of just like a fallback if you need to have a certain color. Let's kind of go back to a light gray. Okay, so that works good right there. And then everything else down here, you're going to probably just want to keep off for everything to work correctly. And if you remember, I have this little drop shadow right here on this. So it's confusing because you would think that the box shadow would work within here, but that's not the case. This, these settings in most of these cases are just for a regular drop down menu, not a safe section. So if you want to have a box shadow, you're going to have to go back into your sections and add it there and then it will pull through. So let me show you where I was able to add the box shadow to make that work correctly. So if you click on the section itself, go under style, border, you can see right here I just have a regular box shadow. And I just have a really simple eight horizontal, eight vertical, a little opacity, just regular uh, box shadow. So you're just gonna have to do that for each of your sections if you wanna have a box shadow. So let me close that down. And now you can see when you do this, everything's got the box shadow. Everything is working the way uh, I showed you in the beginning of the tutorial. Um, I do notice that when you change one of these things, it could mess up the whole menu system just as a FYI. If you change the top distance, so this is usually like a gap in between when um, someone would hover. You see this big gap right here of like 40 pixels, 44 pixels. Because it's a safe section, you can see right here, let me actually update the website and show you that you do not want to mess with this top distance because it's going to make it where the menu system doesn't work at all, at all. So as you can see, when you hover over each one of these items, that top distance gap is causing a problem where I can't mouse down into the menu system. So I recommend just putting that back down to nothing. So just delete it and then you should be good to go. And when you switch over into any of your responsive modes, so tablet or mobile, um, any of the ones that have the hamburger dropdown, um, any of the styling that you need to do uh, within the mega menu system itself, uh, you need to do that actually over here in the safe templates. So you're gonna wanna make sure that everything stacks and works the way that you want, depending on what device you are on. Like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, mega menus are not easy to design. They take a lot of work and you gotta go back and forth and make sure things work between the browsers. Um, I do recommend in a lot of cases to just not have a mega menu system on your mobile device. Um, you're gonna run into more complications than if you didn't have a mega menu system. So I personally, when I design a client website, I like to have a mega menu system only on like desktop and then just switch over to a different menu system on a tablet or mobile. Um, that's gonna save you a lot of time and effort because um, if you do need to support a tablet and mobile, you gotta start doing a lot of testing on iPads and everything because these things work a little bit different than a regular menu system because you're dealing with a whole bunch of uh, sections on top of each other. So you could run into some weird bugs, but I found in most cases, uh, if you're designing this for a client website or for your own website, you're going to have a lot less to worry about if you just keep it on the desktop version. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.